Starfield and Cyberpunk 2077 are the two biggest sci-fi RPGs released in the last few years, but if I had to play only one of them, which one would I choose? In this video, we're going to compare the gameplay, exploration, immersion factor, and quests from these two games. I'll also be vague posting about each game's story to avoid spoilers to the best of my ability, while still comparing the writing quality. We'll see how that goes. So buckle up grab some iced coffee, and let's have a showdown between Starfield and Cyberpunk 2077. Let's start with the combat. Starfield's gunplay is very reminiscent of Fallout 4, down to a lot of the same weapon types, laser rifles, automatic weapons, pistols, etc. To be honest, I was a bit disappointed with the arsenal in this game. Bethesda had an opportunity to really lean into futuristic technology, given a spacefaring game set 300 years in the future. And yet, they basically just copy-pasted the weapon list from Fallout 4. Unique weapon types are few and far between, though I did enjoy Jasper Crix's automatic 50 cal rifle, which just pumps out insane damage. Unfortunately, this isn't even a unique weapon, just a reskin of the basic mag shear rifle. On the other hand, Cyberpunk 2077 has an impressive and growing list of weapons, ranging from basic rifles and pistols, all the way up to tech weapons you can charge for insane damage, and power weapons that allow you to ricochet bullets. Some weapons like Johnny Silverhand's Melorian even have unique reloading animations that lend more to immersion and cool factor. And at times, you'll even get special dialogue encounters when finding a new unique weapon. Looks like your Nobu left us a parting gift. Ain't much, but it'll have to do. CDPR especially got creative with the unique weapons like Adam Smasher's shotgun, a pistol that speaks to you and can auto-target enemies, and a lightsaber melee weapon, among many, many others. Despite being set in a dystopian post-American society only 50 years in the future, somehow Cyberpunk 2077 sports more advanced technology than a space game set in the 2300s. As for the enemy encounters in Starfield, you'll mostly fight against human enemies with occasional hostile aliens and robot mobs thrown in for good measure. Hilariously, some of the alien enemies were just kind of reskins from past Bethesda games like the Charis monsters ported from Skyrim into one of the main story missions. Starfield's gunplay is relatively fun, but it feels a bit outdated for the 2020s. Enemies are way too spongy, especially in the early game, so you'll have to pump tons of ammo into basic goons to kill them. This problem does improve somewhat later in the game once you've maxed out some combat skills, but pumping dozens of bullets into a single enemy doesn't feel that fun, especially when these enemies pose little threat to the player. The enemy AI in Starfield is completely brain dead, so you'll rarely ever face risk of death in these encounters, which is kind of a drag. Bethesda games have never had great combat, so it isn't exactly surprising, but disappointing nonetheless. Starfield also has a variety of gravitational powers which you'll unlock through the main story. These are essentially the equivalent of shouts from Skyrim. Space shouts, if you will. I mostly use the ones which slowed down time and knocked back enemies with a gravitational wave, but you can also summon a duplicate copy of yourself to fight alongside you, and some other incredibly useful abilities. I will give Starfield props for the ship combat though. This is one gameplay feature that makes it stand out from other games in the genre, including Mass Effect, The Outer Worlds, and most of the Star Wars games. You can also build and customize your own spaceship, which is a great feature. I still haven't explored this in an in-depth way, but I have seen compilations of some of the cool ships people have built. Cyberpunk 2077 is poised to introduce vehicle combat in the upcoming patch 2.0 and Phantom Liberty expansion, but we'll have to see how it plays when the time comes. Overall, Starfield's combat is serviceable, but I was certainly hoping for something more from a futuristic science fiction game. Cyberpunk's combat isn't particularly difficult, but enemies are marginally more competent than Starfield and can sometimes pose a threat to the player. They will attempt to flank you, and some enemies can be pretty accurate with their grenade tosses. I've probably been flatlined more often by grenades than anything else in the game. Enemies can be bullet sponges in the early game, but that is quickly rectified as soon as you get some better guns. Hacking also plays a big role in Cyberpunk's combat, which is one thing that makes it stand out from Starfield. There are a large variety of quick hacks you can equip, 
with more becoming available if you spec into intelligence attributes and hacking perks. Some, like Short Circuit, Overheat, and Contagion just deal straight damage, but there are some other really unique ones, like Cyber Psychosis, which turns enemies hostile against their allies, one which allows you to remotely detonate a grenade in an enemy's pocket, and even a quick hack to cause an enemy to shoot themselves, which is incredibly wild. <laughs> And when it comes to stealth gameplay, there is just no contest. Starfield's stealth mechanics are absolutely anemic when compared to Cyberpunk. Bethesda hasn't changed up their stealth gameplay for 20 years. The only stealth mechanic is crouching to sneak. That's it. There are no melee takedowns, no way to tag enemies with your scanner, no whistling or hacking to lure or distract enemies, just a crouch button. In Cyberpunk, you can not only crouch to sneak, but you can do lethal or non-lethal one-hit takedowns on unaware enemies. You can hide bodies in dumpsters to avoid alerting the guards. You can hack a vending machine to lure an enemy away. You can even temporarily blind enemies with the Reboot Optics Quick Hack. Plus, you can use your scanner to tag and track enemies. Most of these mechanics aren't revolutionary or new, but the fact that Starfield doesn't have any of them shows how far behind the ball they are when it comes to stealth gameplay. Overall, I find Cyberpunk 2077's combat to be more engaging and fun when compared to Starfield. And while I do have fun with Starfield, the combat is just lackluster. But we've talked long enough about combat, let's move on to exploration and immersion. On a surface level, Starfield's exploration seems more compelling than Cyberpunk 2077. I mean, who doesn't want to have their own spaceship, hopping to different star systems in search of aliens, loot, and cool shit to see? It's an explorer's wet dream, right? But once you spend some time actually traveling to different locations in this game, you'll begin to see how shallow the exploration truly is. Outside of a few handcrafted city environments and small outdoor zones, most of the planets are completely empty and devoid of interesting content. When you drop onto a new planet in Starfield, you'll be met with a gigantic empty open space with a handful of minerals, procedurally generated copy and paste buildings, and maybe a few space pirates or alien creatures. You won't discover any quest content, interesting loot, or compelling stories in 99.9% .9 of these locations. Plus, the lack of ground vehicles in the game makes getting around these vast, empty spaces take much longer than it should. So unless you like running around open spaces, mining rocks, and scanning berry bushes, then you will get bored from exploration very quickly in Starfield. Starfield's space travel is kind of a joke, too. You can't actually fly anywhere. The spaceship is basically just a fast travel and loading screen simulator with a few sandboxes to fight against other ships in the sky. And like many things in this game, fast travel requires more steps than most other games in the genre. Most travel requires two separate menu interactions and two separate loading screens. First, you have to grav jump to the planet you want to land on. Then, after going through a loading screen, you have to open up your map again and fast travel again to land on the planet which includes an additional loading screen. Cyberpunk's fast travel system is kind of outdated too, so I'm not gonna pretend that it's some great achievement. You can't simply travel from anywhere on the map. You first have to run to a dedicated fast travel terminal and then select where you want to go. But at least it's only one menu interaction and one loading screen. What I will say is that traveling around the map is a lot more fun in Cyberpunk because of the vehicles. I truly enjoy driving around Night City in my Rayfield, so it's actually one of the few games where I will ignore fast travel and just drive to my next objective. And thankfully, CDPR fixed the driving mechanics to make vehicles easier to control, so it's no longer the janky mess it was on release. Night City is an environment you can truly get immersed in, but just like Starfield, the illusion of this immersive experience starts to fall apart when you dig beneath the surface. Most of the buildings in this game are completely closed off to the player, just an empty facade to fill out the environment. I don't see much of a reason to explore off the beaten path in Night City, because most of the time there is simply nothing to discover. And the sea of generic NPCs don't really add much to the gameplay either. But to CDPR's credit, NPCs will at least react to some of your interactions with the game world. For instance, if you pull out a gun, or otherwise get into combat in a crowd, NPCs will flee for their lives, and some may even fight back. 
Starfield NPCs, including the police, are completely unmoved by gunfire, though. But if you pick up a coffee cup that ain't yours, prepare to get shot in the head or hauled off to prison. Stop right there, criminal scum! In both Starfield and Cyberpunk 2077, I find the best way to play is to just seek out the quest content, because the chances of stumbling upon anything compelling through open-ended exploration is pretty slim. Sure, you might run across a cool easter egg from time to time, but it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. The best part of many RPGs are the quests and stories that you can discover within the game world. Starfield and Cyberpunk 2077 are no different in this regard. After 80 hours of gameplay and over 120 quests completed, I still haven't seen everything Starfield has to offer. And don't let the sheer amount of quest content fool you into thinking this game is all about quantity over quality. There are some phenomenal missions you can experience, and I think this is some of Bethesda's best work in terms of quest content. Don't get me wrong, there's still a lot of filler content in this game, but there is more than enough handcrafted quality side quests with compelling stories and difficult choices to keep you engaged for dozens of hours in a single playthrough. The adventures you can discover range from investigating a threat from mind-controlling aliens, to working as a double agent amongst pirates, to discovering a 200-year-old Earth colony ship looking for a new world to call their own, and much, much more. I spent over 50 hours exploring side quests throughout the galaxy before fully diving into the main story of this game, and I had an absolute blast doing so. On the other hand, Cyberpunk 2077 doesn't have anywhere near as much content as Starfield, but the quality of the quests you will experience in this game are easily as good or better than the best missions in Starfield. In particular, the quests involving Joshua Stevenson, Delamain the AI Taxi, and the Mayor of Night City are some of the most memorable missions I have ever played in any RPG. Period. As for the main story, Cyberpunk 2077 takes the cake. Without going into too many details for folks who haven't played the game, I found the overall pacing and dramatic stakes to be much more interesting in Cyberpunk. I'm still a little conflicted about the structure of Act 1 because it is simultaneously too short from a narrative perspective, but too long from a gameplay perspective. Basically, you don't get access to the full Night City map and most of the quest content until the beginning of Act 2. It usually takes me 4 hours to complete Act 1, even if I'm in a rush, which feels way too long to be locked into a single district. And yet, four hours doesn't provide enough time for some of the character development and narrative shifts you'll be experiencing. So yeah, I have mixed feelings about that. But overall, the high-stakes nature of the plot and the quality of the characters you meet in Night City keeps me highly invested in the game throughout its entire runtime. On the other hand, Starfield's main story gets off to a very slow start. And while Bethesda turns up the heat later in the main quest, it takes them too long to get cooking in my opinion. I was so mind-numbingly bored with the main quest after about 5 or 6 hours that I went off to do side quests for nearly 50 hours before circling back to the main plot. And while some players have been calling this the best main quest line in a Bethesda game to date, that's honestly an incredibly low bar, and I'm not even sure I agree with that. Starfield explores some interesting scientific and philosophical concepts in the main story, and this even factors into how they handle New Game Plus. Which, by the way, NG Plus is a welcome addition to this game. People have been asking for this type of game mode from Bethesda for years, so I'm glad they finally delivered. But overall, I don't think Starfield is some incredible 10 out of 10 storytelling. It's relatively interesting and gets the job done, but it's nowhere near as compelling as Baldur's Gate 3, Mass Effect, or Cyberpunk 2077. So at the end of the day, which game is better, Starfield or Cyberpunk 2077? The question is obviously subjective, but personally, I prefer Cyberpunk. The narrative, gameplay, storytelling, and immersion are just better in Night City. The combat is more engaging with more interesting mechanics, weapon variety, and builds to explore. The characters and storytelling are better too, and the overall presentation and game world are more immersive. Starfield is a good game and definitely has its strengths in terms of quest content, I also think it provides a great platform for creating your own space adventure or fantasy. But if I had to choose just one of these games to play, I would definitely go with Cyberpunk 2077. So there you have it. Cyberpunk 2077 is a better game than Starfield. What do you think of the opinions expressed in this video? Do you prefer Starfield over Cyberpunk? Or do you hate both of these games? Let me know in the comments section below. 
If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more RPG videos. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.